Good morning, and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant this morning is Father Figueroa. Our Mass intentions are for all of our parish parishioners and benefactors, Dr. John McSweeney and Virginia Marie Stewart. Some festival news this morning. The $100 raffle tickets are available in the parish office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Someone will walk away with $10,000, $5,000, or three $1,000 prizes. Purchase your prepaid wristband tickets for the rides for each night during the festival in the parish office between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday for $30, cash only. Wristbands purchased at the festival will be $35 per ticket. Please rise for our processional hymn, Come to the Feast, number 306. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Great
graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. As you go forward to visit the sick and the homebound, bring you through the prayers of this parish community and through the intercession of St. Augustine, St. Monica, and all the saints. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem. From the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room, and where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, please turn to number 764. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the works that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you when you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you. Because the word you gave me, I have given to them, and they accept them and truly understand, understood that I come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a very quick word of gratitude for our children's choir and their uh, music teachers. You know, in many ways, they help us to glorify God so beautifully through their voice, through their song. And so it's so important that we continue to support our children's choir. Uh, In a particular way, I'm reminded that so many of the greatest singers in history began in a church choir. And so in many ways, their voices will be shaped and formed and they gain their confidence. And so, so many beautiful things happen in a church choir. And so we're very grateful for this gift to St. Augustine's Church of our wonderful children's choir and their dedicated teachers. So let's continue to support them and maybe send some more uh, students to join. You know, throughout the Old Testament, we encounter many figures who prepare the way and foreshadow the coming of the Messiah. Just to mention two of these figures, we can consider great men like Jacob and Moses. Both of these men did something very specific before they died. Before their death, they both delivered a sort of farewell speech. In this speech, they did three different things. First, they praised God for his goodness to them. Secondly, they asked that their followers would remain true to God and to his covenant. And thirdly, They prayed for God's blessing upon those whom they were leaving behind. So they praised God for his goodness. They asked that their followers remain true to God. And they prayed for God's blessing upon those they're leaving behind. Of course, in the New Testament, the long-awaited for Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, would not be an exception to this. 
he continues the custom of these Old Testament patriarchs. And as the hour of our Lord was at hand, we hear the conclusion of his farewell address in today's Holy Gospel. As Christ was preparing to willingly sacrifice himself to the Father for our redemption, he first offered this prayer. This prayer in which he speaks to the Father is fittingly called the Great High Priestly Prayer. This exchange between the Father and the Son is especially important because it contains our Lord's last thoughts and sentiments for us. His last thoughts and sentiments for us before he would be put to death. St. Augustine makes the point that Christ could have made this prayer to the Father in silence, but he chose instead to manifest his desire out loud in order to teach us and to demonstrate his great love for us. Throughout the Gospels, we hear the Messiah speak to us about how blessed we are to be invited to hear the way in which the only begotten Son speaks to our Father. Our Lord makes something very clear in this prayer. He makes it clear that we belong to the Father, and by virtue of our belonging to God the Father, we too belong to God the Son. We, we must never forget that we are the apple of God's eye. It was for us that he came into the world, and it was for us that he was put to death. Christ said, I do not pray for the world, but for, those, for the ones you have given me. This is important for us to understand. Our Lord died to atone for every sin that would ever be committed and so that all would be redeemed. But he knew that there will stu still be some who would not be willing to give up the ways of the world in order to follow him. He knew that there would be still be some who would be more preoccupied with doing their own will rather than accepting the will of God. In a word, these are the ones who exclude themselves from heavenly glory because they are unwilling to detach from the false pleasures of the world and the glamorous sin. Our, our Lord also speaks about what we need to inherit eternal life. He says, now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. We need to know God. We need to know Jesus. This knowing God is not something merely passive or just on the surface. To the Semitic mind, knowing means something much, much more. Knowing means having a deep and personal relationship. Knowing denotes a profound intimacy. For our part, we cannot love a person that we do not know. To truly love God, we need to grow in knowing Him. We get to know Him, of course, through our daily prayer, our daily conversation with the Lord, where we speak to Him from the bottom of our hearts, and He speaks to us back in the silence of our hearts. We get to know Him by studying our holy faith, by reading good spiritual books, and of course, by reading the sacred scriptures. We get to know Him by meeting Him in the sacraments. We get to know Him by living holy lives where we seek to glorify God in all that we do. Building on this topic, Pope Benedict XVI of Blessed Memory said the following, True knowledge of God consists in a personal, profound experience of Jesus Christ and of his love. The Pope continued, Dear brothers and sisters, this is true for every Christian. Faith is first and foremost a personal, intimate encounter with Jesus. It is having an experience of his closeness, his friendship, and his love. 
it is in this way that we learn to know him, that we learn to know him ever better, to love him and to follow him more and more. May this happen to each one of us. Indeed, may this happen to each one of us. However, we cannot forget that there's only one thing that will hinder this friendship. The one thing that creates an obstacle between us and God is sin. Sin in all its forms. Now, in some way or another, we all have our sinful habits. Regardless if we're fighting against mortal sin or venial sin, whether if we're suffering with a particular sin to a minor or greater degree, we must seek to root out all sin. We must do this not only for the sake of our salvation, but also because all sin deprives God of the glory that he is due. Yet, it's important to acknowledge also that during this time as we await the coming of the Holy Spirit, that we are reminded that we will receive an advocate, the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier, and he gives us all that we need to glorify God. He equips us with the supernatural radar to follow God, as well as all the supernatural weapons to move away from sin and to live godly lives. In a word, the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to arise from the darkness of this world into the glorious life of God's grace. This power comes by way of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit and his 12 fruits. Of course, one of those supernatural gifts is the great gift of knowledge. It is the Holy Spirit who leads us to true knowledge of God. So as we stand with the apostles and Our Lady at this moment in preparation for the Holy Feast of Pentecost, let us pray for an outpouring of these gifts and fruits in our lives. Let us pray that we may come to know and love God more intimately, that we may develop a deeper friendship by speaking with him often. And let us pray that we may detach from all sin and follow Christ no matter the cost. Keep it in mind that we do this not only so that we may obtain our crown of glory in heaven, but we do it for the greater glory of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the church, that she may shine as a beacon of holiness and truth to the world, we pray to the Lord. 
for an outpouring of blessings upon all teachers and students as they prepare to conclude this school year. We pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that we may be open to God's gifts as we await the coming of the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and diaconate, especially from our own parish, we pray to the Lord. For the sake of our parish, especially Gertrude Pickney, Michelle Barton, Ellen Mitchell, Joanna Ciracella, Anna Milo, Chris Slattery, Manuel Ortsty, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, for Diane Pezaluch, and especially for all our parishioners and benefactors, and Dr. John McSweeney and Virginia Marie Stewart, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for the intentions in our book of petitions, and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Our offertory hymn is The Eyes and Hands of Christ, number 521.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We praise and glory of the Lord. the balls of the church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom now and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Fly Like a Bird, number 476.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Lord Archangel, Angel, defend us in that Be our protection against the wickedness of the and of God. May God rebuke him and humble him. Our recessional hymn is Immaculate Mary, number 198. <laughs> 